ladles and jelly spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, display case, as you can see, uh, Master Tools, it's a uh, trumpeter's brand. Um, and I'm going to use this to uh, house a diorama. Um, I bought this quite some time ago, uh, in fact I ended up with three of them. Basically I bought one because I had a car that I wanted to display, so I ordered this from eBay and it arrived and the case was cracked so I contacted the vendor they sent me a second one I opened that when it got it turned up that was also cracked so I contacted them again <laughs> and they sent me a third one which was fine so I basically ended up with two of these with uh, cracks in the cases but I'm, I'm going to use it anyway because you know it'd be a waste not to um, so let's take this out of the box and have a look at what we've got and then I'll go into a bit more detail about what I'm actually going to do so here's the display case, um, and I don't know where you can see that, but uh, there's a big crack in the corner there, and there's another crack in the corner there. Um, it's not the end of the world. I think if I put it at the back, um, it'll be fine. But uh, yeah, that was why I got the replacements. But basically, as I said, I'm going to use this to make a diorama. So let's just... So that's basically how big our diorama is going to be. Um, and I've got some bits that are going to, this is basically going to be like an infantry diorama. Uh, you saw I painted some figures, or a figure before, uh, so I'm going to do some more. So let me show you the figures. I, uh, I bought a load of them um, when I was at Hobbycraft the other day, as I mentioned previously. So I've got these ones here, uh, which is uh, the US Army, uh, and I've also got uh, German assault troops, and German Panzer Grenadiers. Now I'm not going to use all of these. Uh, I'm probably going to use maybe four of them. Uh, it depends. I've got to have a look at the base and see how it works. But I'm going to use uh, probably a couple, maybe one or two out of each box. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we'll unbox some of these and then we'll see how they fit on the diorama and uh, go from there. So I've just done a little bit of basic layout here. Uh, I don't know if this is how it's going to stay. Um, but I've just put a couple of the uh, dry stone walls that I made previously on the base just to get a rough idea of what it looks like and I think what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use maybe one figure out of each so um, what I want to try and do is this guy here uh, I've got to check and see if he fits but I want, to, I want him shooting over this wall so we'll try that one and from this, the, the Panzer Grenadiers set, I'm going to try and get this guy here and have him leaning against the wall, here. And from this set, I think I'm going to go probably with these two. And I'll put them on as well. Uh, so, or possibly these two. I haven't quite made my mind. <laughs> uh, so it's either with these two or these two. So let's get some of these out of the box and see what they look like. Right, so this is the Assault Troops set. And the frames are stuck together. Uh, there's a sheet of decals there. These are, I believe, for the helmet uh, decals. But we may use those, we may not. Um, so... Basically, let's have a look. Uh, this is the chap we want here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take these pieces off the frame, and I think I might just kind of blue tack them together and see how it fits. So let's do that first. I think that will probably work actually. Alright, so we'll go with that one for there. I can always modify the wall slightly to make it fit. And let's get the other guy out. So again, this is the uh, the Pan Panzer Grenadiers set. Ugh. Right, <clears throat> that decal sheet looks 
yeah, it's the same decal sheet for both. Um, so we want you. There's quite a lot of uh, mold lines on these, which is not great, but we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think he'll do there, and then uh, we'll do a couple of the Americans as well. But I think what I'll do is um, I'll get all these cleaned up. Uh, and then we'll paint the figures and then we'll figure out the final positioning of everything. What's interesting about these American ones is uh, they actually have instructions. Whereas on the German ones it's all printed on the back of the box. So yeah, quite an interesting difference between the two. It's a much smaller box as well. So yeah, interesting. Still, carry on. Right, so here's our uh, four soldiers that we're going to use. So we've got the, uh, the MG34 gunner, uh, this chap looking around the corner. We've got uh, an American flamethrower gent. Um, and uh, this guy here. I couldn't decide at first whether to give him the Garand or the, or the BAR, but I decided the BAR is probably a bit more wary. Um, so that's that. So... Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint up the figures first and then uh, move on to the diorama. So I can do all of their faces and hands at once uh, and then obviously I have to do their uniform separately. So let's do that next. So what I'm going to do now is just, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail of painting this. I'll put a link to a, a video where I painted some figures before because it's exactly the same techniques. So basically, I'm just going to do a little montage, as it were, uh, of the figures going together and, and a few different techniques that I used. Um, and then we'll move on. So uh, this is uh, probably one of the most interesting bits, actually, is, is uh, filling all the gaps <laughs> on these various uh, models with the um, Mr. Dissolved Putty, which is great for this kind of thing. So, yeah, very useful. Um, highlighting... Uh, and uh, low lighting and things like that and one of the most uh, interesting things I found was on the German troops was using the Vallejo field grey and then using the Tamiya field grey because they're actually a slightly different colour so they work really well to uh, make differences on the uniforms but anyway let's move on right so I'm going to start working on the base now and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go round the edge of this with some masking tape and that's for two reasons. Firstly so I don't get any overspray or paint or anything on the edges but also to protect this groove where the case fits so that we don't end up with, you know, in a situation where we can't put the case on. So masking tape. So I'm just going to go like a couple of millimetres from the edge uh, just to uh, as I say, it's mainly to protect the uh, the groove so that it doesn't get anything in it. And I'll just fold it underneath like that and I'll just go around the rest of it right so that's uh, that's that taped up uh, what I'm gonna do now is put some uh, filler on the top of this uh, to give it a bit of texture so this is just some uh, cheap filler from um, b and I think I can't remember that. anyway but it's just like normal ready mix filler Right, so <laughs> this is unfortunately dried out a bit. I haven't used it for a long time, but uh, I think it will still be all right. I'm just using a little palette knife here to put this on, um, but you could use, you know, a lolly stick or your fingers or whatever. Um, so we'll just spread this out. It's probably going to have some lumps in it, but I'm not really that fussed about that at the moment. What I want to try and do, if I can, is just keep away from the edges a little bit. 
so that um, we don't end up going over the tape although if we do it doesn't matter because that's what the tape's there for I'll just spread this out right so as you can see I've given this a coat I did decide to go up to the edges in the end and what I've done is I've gone very thin where the tape is so um, when I peel the tape off it will give us a nice straight edge but what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to let this dry for a little while um, and before it sets up completely I'll just go over it with some water um, just with my fingers and kind of smooth it out a bit more so we'll just leave this to dry for a little while the other thing I want to do before this sets up is um, these are the wall pieces that I'm going to use and I just want to get them kind of positioned roughly so they leave a bit of an indent in the uh, in the in the filler so that I know where they're going to go right I think something like that so this side is going to be uh, like a roadway like a dirt track and this side is going to be a field so let's get a bit of water so I've just got a bit of water here in this pot and I'm just going to dip my finger in it and just I want to kind of make this a bit more roady if you see what I mean so I'm going to put a couple of uh, not try and get some like ruts in it and stuff just before this has had a chance to set up too much so what I'm doing to start with is I'm just like tapping it with my finger just to create uh, like an indentation where the wheels of any passing vehicles would have been And as I say, once this has dried a bit more, I'll um, I'll go back over it and just smooth it out if there's anything I'm not happy with. To help me with this, uh, I've got some uh, a wheel here. Uh, this is a uh, like an aftermarket wheel set that I got from. Uh, it came in a big box of bits that I got given by somebody and there were some of these wheels uh, I believe they're for a German armoured car but I don't know what exactly um, but uh, as you can see uh, well I don't know where you can see that but they're actually very well detailed so I'm going to try and kind of roll this across to put some tyre tracks in it I don't know whether this is going to work but we'll try it So I'll do some now, like this, and then I'll once it's dried a bit more, I'll do it again to get make them a bit more well defined. So I think just to make this easier, I've just drilled a hole through the middle of the sprue, and uh, I'll put this on this cocktail stick like that, and hopefully that will make it a bit easier to roll. Uh, that's much better. Right, now we'll let this dry out a bit more and then um, go over it again to make some sort of more defined ones. I might see if I can find a bit of tank track as well. I think that'll look quite nice. But um, yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. Right, so this has had plenty of time to dry now. Um, what I did uh, off camera is I basically used the... Uh, at the end of a brush and I just made some little divots in the uh, in the plaster uh, or in the filler um, just to look like like animal prints so it looks like the gates been used or this entrance been used um, and I've also taken the wall sections off now and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting some color on this so I've got two colors here 
Uh, I'm going to use um, this red brown for the like the field side, and I'm going to use the flat earth. Um, stop laughing at the back for the road. So these will just be the base colours for each side, and I'll just put these on with the airbrush. Right, so that's the uh, the red brown, and now I'll do the same on this side using the flat earth. I didn't actually bother cleaning out the airbrush, I just uh, put the flat earth in over the top. That doesn't look too bad, does it? I'm just going to uh, stick the wall back on with a bit of uh, PVA. That's probably way too much, but never mind. And the next thing is I'm going to put a wash over this to uh, to give it some low lights. So to make the wash, I've got this um, burnt umber, and I'm going to put it in this. It's an old yogurt pot. I'll put some in here with a bit of water, and then we'll just put it on all over. All right. Let's see what this is like. Right, now we'll uh, leave this to dry and see what it looks like. Right, this is all nice and dry now and I have to say I'm very pleased with how it's looking so far. I think it looks really good. Um, what I'm going to do now is put some uh, grass on it. So uh, I've got some uh, static grass. Um, this stuff here, which is, uh, this is the 2mm. I've got various different uh, sizes. Um, and what I do is I've put, I've mixed some together in this pot, so it's two, four, and six millimeter grass, as you can see, and I will be applying it with the smallest of my uh, static grass generators. Uh, I'll put a link to the video where I made this. Uh, but basically, what I'm going to do is put some uh, some glue on here, some PVA, and then I'll put the grass on with this. So I'll get all that set up and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I actually apply it. Right, so this is just some uh, PVA with a bit of uh, water in it. I find that if you add some water to PVA it dries a lot quicker. So, but anyway, uh, I'll just put this on. And you can put this on fairly sort of thick, but basically just put it on wherever you want the, uh, the grass to stick. So I'm going sort of fairly haphazard around the rougher area because I don't want grass all over that. But I'm trying to get it sort of around the, the, the hoof prints and whatnot. And I'm also going to go right up to the edge of the walls with it. Right, that'll do to start with. Now we take our static grass generator applicator. And as you can see, it'll go all over the place, but that doesn't matter because once it's uh, once we've got it on, we can just tip it up, and where there's no glue, it will just fall off. I'm going to put some shorter stuff in and go around the edges with it. Let's just shake that off. And there we go, you see. Now what I'll do is I'll just go around the other side of this with the glue and do the same thing on this side. All 
Right, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I can just uh, touch this up a bit with a with a brush and a few other bits just to clear up a few any bits that where there's like too much grass or anything like that. And also just go over the grass slightly, either with your finger or with a brush or anything really. I mean, even a brush handle will do like this, and just kind of moosh the grass around a little bit, just so that it's not all sticking up straight and uniform. Like that, you see. Right. I'll do a little more tidying up of this and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. Right, so what I've got here are some uh, tufts that I bought off of um, eBay. There's various grasses and things. I've got some flowers as well and I'm going to put a couple of these on um, just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. Especially around like the base of the wall and things like that. So these are quite nice because they're self-adhesive so you just peel them off and then you just uh, you just stick them on wherever you want them so I think what I might do is just clear up a little bit of this grass like that and then just stick that in there like that There we go. And I've got some more here. Again, these these all came from the same set from uh, as you warpainter.net. I got them off eBay. They're very cheap. You can make your own, but quite frankly, sometimes it's cheaper just to buy them. There you go, you see, I think they look pretty good. I might put a couple more on as well. And uh, these are the same stones that I used to make the walls. Um, so I'm going to put just put a couple around just to uh, like simulate where the walls crumbled and fallen down. And this is uh, Woodland Scenics Blended Turf. Um, I like this because it has these little yellow flecks in. They kind of look like little flowers when you put them on. So I'll just sprinkle some of this around over the grass. Don't need masses amounts of it. Also try and get a bit on, on the walls as well because it looks like moss. And uh, this is woodland scene as well. This is burnt grass. Now this stuff is really amazing because it's a, it's it looks like it doesn't match, but it really blends it all together well. So again, you don't need huge amounts of it. Just sprinkle a little bit on, and it just kind of ties everything together. And now what I've got here is uh, a bottle of uh, scenery glue. I made this in another video, I'll put a link up to that. And uh, basically what we do, you can apply this with a spray bottle, but I find that it's it can be quite messy if you do that. So for a small area like this, I just put it on with a, with a pipette like this. But you just go over the whole thing and uh, it will just basically nail everything down. And uh, hold everything in place and there we go now we we'll just leave that uh, to dry right so this is uh, this is dry now and uh, actually I'm quite pleased with that it's looking that's come out quite nice um, what I want to do now is just give it a coat of um, this uh, Vallejo matte varnish and all I want to do is just there are a few shiny spots on it uh, like on the walls and so on where the glue 
where the scenery glue has been and everything and the PVA it, it kind of dries quite glossy so um, I just want to uh, put a, a quick coat of matte varnish over it just to knock that shine off. There we go, that's all it takes. Right, now, for the next fun bit, <laughs> I've got to try and get the, uh, the tape off. So, I think what I might do actually, is I might run the knife down the edge here and then take the tape off that way. Because what I don't want to do is risk um, pulling up the, the base. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not to come out too bad at all. Um, I might just have to touch up the edge very slightly, but I'll see what it looks like when I've got all of it off. I'll try the same thing, just run the knife down and then peel the tape off. The last time I did one of these, I actually didn't take the, um, the, the covering right up to the tape. I left the gap. And I didn't do it this time, and I, I kind of wish I had now. <laughs> It'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Right, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, there's a few little bits I need to touch up, but I'll just put a bit of brown wash on that and that'll get rid of that. So I'll do that next quickly and then um, there's one final thing I want to do to this base before I put the figures on. Right, so the last thing I want to do is apply some, uh, like, just some minor water effects in the ruts and things. So I've got this uh, X22 clear varnish and uh, I'm just going to put some on with a brush in some of the wheel tracks and that just to make it like a few little puddles. I'm not sure if it's going to work but we'll give it a go. I don't want to put too much on, but I just want it to look like damp in places. I think this is working quite well. So I'm mainly aiming for the bits where the wash is a lot darker. Because that would make the mud look more wet. Right, I think that'll do. It doesn't look too bad at all, does it? Uh, so I think we're almost done with this now. Uh, I think what we need to start doing now is thinking about putting the figures on. Right, so it's time to mount our figures onto the base. So we'll start with this guy here. And he's going to go kind of here like this so he's resting his MG on the uh, on the wall like that now he can probably just stand where he is and I can just glue him down but what is also a good idea is to make sure they stay put 
is to use the hole in his foot that I used to hold him while I was painting him and actually use that to fix him down. So what we'll do is we'll get him where we want him, get him in position like that. About there I think. And then what we'll do is pin him down and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So the first thing I want to do is make a mark on the base where that corresponds with the hole in his foot which is about there. So I'm just going to make a little mark there like that. And what we'll do is we'll take the pin vise and we'll drill a little hole there just carefully. And now I'm going to use this. Now this is a paper clip as you can see. I'm going to straighten this out or part of it out like that. And I'm going to put it in the hole like that. And I'm going to cut a piece off and basically glue it into the hole and then into his foot and that will hold him in place. So, so I'm going to use a pair of uh, side cutters and just snip a bit of this off. It doesn't need to be very long. Like that. And now we'll get some super glue. This is just uh, cheap stuff from the pound shop. And we'll take our figure, we'll take our bit of paper clip, we'll put some super glue on the paper clip, and we'll pop that in the hole in his foot, like, ugh, not like that. pop that in there like that you see and then we'll put some glue on his foot and on the pin and then we can put that in the hole on the base like that you see Now we'll do the same with this guy here. So he's going to go See this one is a bit more important. He's going to basically be against this wall here. Like that. So he's kind of ducking back behind the wall to reload. So we'll do the same thing with him. Okay, so now I've got these two on. I'm going to put the uh, the two Americans on, and then I've got a little bit of a little bit of a surprise for you. <laughs> right, so there's our four intrepid soldiers placed, and I know what you're thinking. He's finally flipped his lid. He's put them all on the wrong side. Well, no, because there is uh, another figure to go on this diorama, and that is this guy here. <laughs> and there we go that's why the diorama is called the enemy of my enemy <laughs> basically it's a, a bit of a bit of a sci-fi mashup uh, these four guys have basically encountered some weird alien robot thing and they've had to join forces and try and fight it off so uh, you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> now, obviously, I haven't uh, spoken about this chap here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separate video on him and where he came from and how he ended up on this diorama. So, uh, yeah. That's uh, pretty much it, really. I'll just stick this guy down. And uh, we can put the top on and then we can wrap this up.
And here is the finished article. Uh, I have to say I'm very pleased with how this has come out. Um, this is uh, mainly an exercise in, in further practicing my, my figure painting. Uh, we've done a little bit of diorama building which has come out quite nice. Um, and I particularly like the uh, inclusion of our our little robot chap on the on the side there. Um, I think he's come out rather well considering he was a uh, <laughs> a toy that I bought from Russia. So yeah, on the whole I'm very pleased with this. So yeah, as I say, I'm, I'm very pleased with how this come out. I've actually got some ideas for um, future videos similar in content to this. So if it's something you're interested in, then you know do let me know. Um, but in the meantime, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.